One of the websites I read about wood turning has started doing monthly challenges. The first one is to make a sphere on the lathe. Well, the moderators gave us a little warning, so I've had a couple of weeks to think about it. And I got this idea that I just couldn't shake. It seems like just about every project I do feels ambitious. And by that I mean outside of my skill level. And this one is no different. Here's how it went. I started with a bit of math, as I am inclined to do at the beginning of most of my projects. If you don't like geometry, you should skip this part. For me though, the planning and engineering of the work is almost as fun as making shavings. Here's my idea. I bought two pounds of Alumalite clear casting resin, and I want to use that as a matrix around a series of 3 8 inch dowels, all in the same direction. There are a lot of things that I've never tried before here, so I'm treating this as an experiment just to gain some experience from the process. My final decision was this. Try a three and a half inch diameter sphere with the dowel space at three quarters of an inch center to center. This will hopefully give me enough room between each dowel that the trap bubbles and the resin can get out. Step one was to mark out and drill the holes for the dowels. I'm using three pieces of Douglas fir 2x6 for my scrap wood resin mold. The drill press would only go about three inches deep, so I drilled the rest of the depth by hand. This was pretty easy since the hole kept a bit perpendicular for the rest of the way. I went ahead and trued up the outside of the mold. Then I turned away the shape of the sphere from the scrap wood. Actually, I turned away the shape of a half sphere, half cylinder, since I didn't want any overhanging pieces that could trap air when the resin is poured into the mold. I took my time to try and get this right. Alumalite is quite a bit more expensive than scrap wood, so I wanted to waste as little of it as possible. The dowels are made from strips of mahogany. I have a dowel cutter which makes pretty quick work of these. I'm actually really impressed with this little tool because it is very consistent and it burnishes the outside of the dowels just a little bit as they come out so they end up very smooth and nice looking with no sanding or cleanup. There are 19 of these in total. I put a little bit of a chamfer on one end of the dowels with some sandpaper. Then I knock them into the holes at the bottom of my scrap wood mold. The only trouble I had here was that the holes on the outside were on such a steep slope that they had more relief on one side and the dowels tended to want to lean toward the center, despite the great care I took to make sure all the holes were drilled parallel. I just kind of fiddled with them until I got it looking right. Up until now I was actually really impressed with how well this worked. It probably seems simple to most of you, but it took me quite a bit of thought to work out this whole process. The next step was to mix and pour the resin. I bought some blue dye and I was hoping to achieve a semi-transparent blue color for the sphere. This is when things started going wrong. I was really having trouble getting the drops to squeeze out of the blue dye bottle. I was shooting for 10 drops and I got the majority of the bottle. Luckily, I hadn't put part B of the resin in, so I had a little bit of time to think about what to do. But it didn't matter anyway. My choices were to either throw $20 worth of resin in the trash and start over, or just to remember that this is an experiment and that I'm probably going to make several more mistakes on it before it's over, and just use the very, very blue well, pretty much black resin, and let it be a lesson learned not to squeeze the bottle so hard next time. So just when I had decided to forge ahead and started mixing in part B of the resin, the battery in my camera died. Now, Alumilite Clear has a pot life of seven minutes, and I made the executive decision to use one of those minutes to run inside and quickly ask my wife to film me with her phone while I poured in the resin. The experienced people who do this type of casting put their resin under pressure, which shrinks any of the occluded air bubbles 
and makes a perfectly homogeneous cast. I'm not set up to do this, and I wasn't ready to go out and purchase a couple hundred dollars worth of supplies on an experiment, so I'm just using what I've got, which in this case is a random orbital sander. Vibration works wonders to consolidate concrete, so my hope was that it would also work with alumilite. Unvelcroing the sander from the bottom without spilling the resin was an unforeseen challenge. This curing resin generated a ton of heat, and at one point I think it was boiling in the mold. I'm not sure if this is normal or if it's a byproduct of putting so much dye into it, or perhaps something else that I did that I didn't even know was wrong, which is entirely possible. But my hopes about a nice clean cast in the mold were not very high after I saw this. Once it was fully cured, it looked like the saddest birthday cake ever. The next step was to turn away the scrap wood to reveal the cured resin inside. And I have to say, as dark as the resin looked cured in the mold, the shavings from the lathe were brilliant blue. The shop was instantly transformed into a confetti factory. People were disco dancing. It was very exciting. The alumilite seemed to be cutting well with the carbide cutter. But the first thing I noticed when I turned off the lathe was chip out. It seems that the not-so-razor-sharp carbide cutter was doing a little bit of cutting and a lot of bit of chipping. The other thing I noticed was bubbles. Lots and lots of bubbles, big and small, had been cured into the resin. But, despite not having a beautiful surface, I had no choice but to continue on. I turned all the wood off and got a rough spherical shape. To turn the sphere, I'm using a method I learned from Alan Stratton, where you mount the sphere on three axes and, quite literally, turn away only the parts that are not a sphere. As you can imagine, this is easier said than done, but after two tries along each axis, I actually had a sphere. It was hideous, rough, honeycombed, and deep, dark, navy blue, almost black, but it was a sphere nonetheless. I didn't do any sanding because I really don't like sanding that much and quite frankly no amount of it was going to do much good for the surface of this sphere. Honestly, if it weren't for the bubbles in the resin and the dull carbide cutter, this probably would have come out looking fairly nice despite all the other mistakes I made. I got to thinking about it and I kind of realized if you were tasked with designing a mold which would trap the most air bubbles in the cast, this is probably pretty close to what you'd come up with. There is just so much surface area for the bubbles to adhere to, it was more than cavalier to even try it. But I learned a lot of important lessons and I got some ideas and inspiration from the process. And if I follow through on any of them, I will be sure to make a video of it and post it for everyone to see. Let me know what you think about this one and thanks for watching.